it. Cool. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cheyenne Trowell. I am the current assistant director for undergraduate admissions here at Virginia Commonwealth University. So welcome uh, to the students that are here with us. And hello, if you'll be uh, watching this recording at a later time. So excited that you're thinking about the college choice process sooner rather than later, especially with us here as VCU since we're right in your backyard. So we're gonna go over a few kind of brief things. Um, and at the end of the presentation, there will be our contact information. So if we're not able to kind of dig into your specific questions today, we'll definitely connect at a later point if you reach out to our office with other concerns or questions. So again, for us here as Virginia Commonwealth University, we are uh, an institution that's comprised of two main campuses. So you have the Monroe Park campus, which is where most of our students spend a lot of their time in academic courses. That's where all of our residential facilities are, our main dining facility, our largest library. And that's kind of where most students are gonna be spending time in their academic courseworks and participating on campus. We also have the MCV campus, which is uh, right up the road, it's about two miles east of us in downtown Richmond, where our health sciences are located. So if you're interested in a health science program, you intend to do any research rooted in that area, clinical experiences or shadowing, you would be at the MCV campus. So in 1968, we were merged uh, of the two campuses, which was previously the Richmond Professional Institute and the Medical College of Virginia to now form VCU. Uh, for us, VCU is in the heart of Virginia, um, also in Richmond. So we're right in the state's capital, and Richmond is our background um, and our backyard. So we love to play in the area and encourage our students to play in the area as well. So what I mean by that is we really encourage students to go into the area and kind of raise and join in community partnerships. So there's 150 plus community partnerships that uh, and, excuse me, VCU as an institution has already fostered, but we make further connections as we navigate through uh, the world and through the area further. There are also a lot of Fortune 500 companies that are also right here in Richmond, Virginia, which is a great benefit to our students. They are able to participate in different research experiences, internships with those companies, or in some cases, those companies are able to partner with us for new buildings, new research innovation ideas, and all types of things on campus. Uh, we are also so about two hours from most areas. So if you're thinking about going to a college that's centered um, and that's at a good point in the state of Virginia, you'll be able to get to DC, to the beach, to the mountains, all fairly in about two hours. However, while you're here in Richmond, there are tons of different things for us to participate in. Um, as you all may know, being that you're kind of close to us. So a lot of times people from this area, when they're searching for a college, they say, oh, it's too close to home or it won't feel different. But honestly, if you're directly on campus with us as a residential student, the experience is completely different from living directly at home versus living on campus or just living in downtown Richmond. So we really encourage students to come to campus to kind of get a feel for the area. And again, it is kind of very separate from your home environment. Again, if you're a residential student directly on campus, with us, which we really encourage. Just to highlight a few things about your residential experience on campus uh, here at VCU, we don't require students to live in VCU managed housing. However, we really encourage you. So for you all, you could potentially commute if you wanted to stay home, which would be a great benefit in reference to finances. However, it could also still be beneficial for you to live on campus with us for maybe one year or two years and then commute the rest of your years. Uh, and the reason for that is there's a lot of great research that shows students who are living directly on campus in a residential format are often more times connected to campus, which in turn makes them perform better academically. And they're also more likely to get involved in co-curricular experiences. You still have all of those options if you are a commuter student and just do decide to stay home for your four years while you're here with us at VCU. However, it is always an option for you to be a residential student. We have many different forms of residential housing options, such as suite style, traditional residence hall style, as well as apartment communities and single rooms. We also do honor roommate requests. So if you have a specific roommate in mind, as long as you all uh, pair each other together on your housing application, you will be matched to live together in your first housing assignment. 
So moving on, we'll get into some kind of general quick numbers about VCU. So we are a larger institution. Uh, we're about 30,000 students. However, even with us being 30,000 students, primarily most of those students are undergraduate students. Our entering freshman class is typically about 4,000 students. Um, so it's still an inter an integrating cohort based ideal and model that will keep you kind of learning and meeting new people, but at the same time you also have plenty of opportunities to build close connections, especially with your faculty members. For us 18 to 1 is our student to faculty ratio. However, if you're thinking about your academic experience at college, think of it like a funnel. When you're kind of starting out at the top of the funnel, there's going to be some more classes that might have a little bit more students in them, maybe 40 to 50, sometimes even 60 to 80. It just depends on what the course is. Typically courses at VCU that are a little bit larger than that, it will trickle down into some kind of experiential learning opportunities throughout the week. So you'll have an opportunity to either participate in the lab with around 20 students or some other type of learning experience that's much smaller. And as you get into your major coursework, the class size will get even smaller as you kind of trickle down. So as a first year student, some of your courses might have a little bit more students than 18 to one. However, by the time you get to the end of your sophomore year, beginning of your junior year, your class size are gonna be a lot smaller. For us, we have around 2,500 full-time faculty members, which for us means that they've earned a terminal degree. So they become an expert in their field through their academic experience. However, the really cool thing here at VCU is we're very focused on making it real for students and making their academic experience real as well. And we focus on doing that through hiring faculty members that are integrated and that have also been practitioners in the field. So if they're working in our school of education, teaching students, who will then become teachers, typically they know what it's actively like to be a teacher in a classroom. So that's gonna help your learning experience be not so focused on the books, but also focused on the aspect of when you're actually in a classroom, these are great benefits and ways that you can conduct your classroom because they've done it before. So they've been where you're going to be going and they can help you transition into that field very seamlessly. Same thing for our College of Engineering, for example. They've actively worked in the field as a nuclear engineer or a nuclear physicist, and they know how it's going to be for you as you're transitioning through your academic experience and as you're going into the workforce for that first year or particular or potentially going into entrepreneurship. We also have a very large alumni base. A lot of our alumni are right here in the city of Richmond with us, which is really cool, or just in the state of Virginia or on the East Coast. That is where our heavy number of alumni populations are. But we have alumni all across the globe. And the great benefit of that is no matter where you're going, you're gonna see that black and gold and you're gonna see someone that was a part of our family at some point. And they're gonna be able to treat you like family and help you with learning new things or integrating into your workspace much better being that they have that VCU connection with you. So you're gonna be able to be connected while you're here with us in the Richmond community, but also post-graduation, you'll still be able to connect with other members of the Ramley all across the state of Virginia and the nation. In reference to some numbers, a lot of people ask, what is the minimum GPA to get in? Or what is the maximum GPA to get in? Or how do I get in in general? So we're going to hit on some stuff about our application process, what's required of you in reference to your application, and some good numbers and things that you can shoot for. So for us, November 1st is our scholarship deadline. So there's three main large scholarships that we offer to students. Uh, those scholarships are called the Presidential Scholarship, the Provost Scholarship, and the Dean Scholarship. So applying and completing your application by November Number first will make you eligible for that scholarship, which is merit-based, solely based on your academic information in addition to the extracurriculars that you were involved in in high school. Now, of course, because of COVID, we understand that things have been impacted in reference to some students' junior and even sophomore year in reference to being involved on campus. So we will take that information into consideration as you're completing your application through Common App. Additionally, January 15th is our regular admission deadline. So if you apply by January 15th, you will be guaranteed a decision by April 1st. However, typically you'll hear back a lot sooner than that. So don't be alarmed by April 1st. That'll still give you plenty of time to hit that May 1st deadline and notify whatever institution of your choosing in reference to a four-year collegiate institution or two-year collegiate institution that you will be going. Hopefully you choose VCU uh, if you apply and are accepted, but of course you still have time to make that final decision.
And reference to what we're looking for academically, we're hoping that you have between a three, four, so 4.06, that is our middle 50%. So 50% of our students who apply to VCU and are offered admission to VCU fall within that range. That is your cumulative weighted GPA through your junior year. So if you're not getting those numbers directly, there is another 25% of our applicant pool that is offered admission. If they're a little bit under those numbers, of course, there's another 25% of our applicant population that are above those numbers. So if you're in that mid-range or above, that's amazing. However, if you're a little bit under, there is still some opportunity there for you. So do reach out to us if you're not directly in these mid-ranges or above, and we can kind of help you figure out things that you can maybe highlight on your application or just assist you with your application procedure and process much sooner rather than later. VCU is a test optional institution, so we do not require you submit an SAT or an ACT. However, if you're interested in submitting your SAT scores because you're feeling really confident after completing that standardized test, uh, we're looking for you to have a 1060 to a 1250. Again, that's what our middle 50% of students who are offered admission have. If you're above those numbers, again, that's even better. If you're a little bit under, there is still some wiggle room there for you. In reference to the ACT, uh, we're looking for you to have around a 22 to a 27 ACT composite score. It's up to you which choice of test that you would like to complete. However, we are test optional. If you are interested in one of our pre-professional or pre-health advising tracks, um, which are seven tracks that are hosted through our honors colleges through a guaranteed admissions agreement, you are required to submit test scores. Upon selecting that academic program or applying to the honors college, it will inform you that that's an application requirement, so you'll be notified. If you're interested in any other academic program at VCU or if you're undeclared, again, that test is up to you if you would like to submit those scores. The application itself here at VCU is very simple. We're a Common App school, so you'll just go through Common App and complete the information as well as the VCU specific questions that we offer for students. You'll complete the essays, and there's also a very unique question on Common App that asks about COVID-19 disruption. So if any aspect of your life, whether that be through family, through school, through work, has been impacted by COVID-19, we wanna hear about it. And that's gonna help us understand that, hey, you really wanted to be involved in high school, but everything was virtual so you didn't have that opportunity but there are things that you completed your sophomore year or freshman year that you can list there or maybe you really wanted to be involved in your high school offered it but you really needed to work to kind of help out in the home environment in reference to home finances that's completely fine we are super understanding have a very holistic review process but we do ask that you let us know about that information in your essay or in that COVID-19 uh, disruption question via common app the only item that we really require for your application is your high school transcript. So we want to see all of your grades through your junior year, your final grades, and potentially you can also show us your mid-semester grades from your senior year, depending on which point uh, in the application process you are. But that's it. The common application, your high school transcript, again, test scores are optional, letters of recommendation are optional outside of the council recommendation that is asked through the common app. Any other additional items such as a resume, maybe an additional essay or a letter of recommendation from someone else outside of your school area, you're more than welcome to submit those items to us. However, again, they're not required. So in reference to, again, VCU, we are truly a campus without boundaries. And here's where we're gonna kind of highlight those experiential learning opportunities that we really encourage students to partake in while they're here with us in the VCU community. So here at VCU, we love for students to complete a research study, to study abroad, or complete an internship experience prior to graduation. And the benefit of that is you're gonna take all of that great knowledge that you're learning in the classroom or in those extracurriculars and apply it to a real world issue where you're gonna have an opportunity to think innovatively, to critical think, um, and to create some larger skills, some soft skills that are going to be really helpful for you as you navigate going into the workforce or going into entrepreneurship. So for us at VCU, around $300 million plus dollars have been collected over the years in grant funds to assist students with independent research studies that they kind of are just interested in and they want to take a deeper dive in, or for our faculty members to assist them with the research that they're actively working on. The amazing thing about VCU and our research opportunities that 
are that they're not just STEM based. A lot of times when people think about research, they think STEM. So they think science, technology, engineering, or math are those only opportunities for research. However, at VCU, even our art history students are actively participating in research, our sociology students, our social work students. So you're not limited in reference to those research opportunities. In addition, we really love for students to study abroad. Of course, COVID did impact our study abroad programs for this past summer. However, they are kicking off and ready to go for next summer, depending on the countries and how things work out uh, in reference to updates to travel for next year. However, Prior to COVID, our students were really integrated and taking, again, all that great knowledge that they were learning in the classrooms and spreading that amongst the world through these study abroad experiences, where they're able to complete a course, go have an integrative experience in another country, learn about the impact that travel does have on a country's uh, economics, or learning about the establishment of math while they're in Greece. So it's really cool opportunities for you to go to another country, potentially for a month, maybe just two weeks, or even up to a whole six months if you decide to study abroad for an entire semester. So it's a great opportunity for you, but again, it's not required. We just really encourage students to do those options. In reference to internships, we have tons and tons of community partnerships right here in Richmond, but also across the state. So we really encourage students to pick a specific workforce area that they're interested in that is in direct correspondence with their academic program and complete an internship. There you'll be kind of logging hours, working directly with someone that is supervising you and taking you uh, hand in hand day by day through what a day in the life is as you're working as a nurse or as you're working as a teacher through partnership or as you're working with a school counselor if you're interested in counseling. So it's a great opportunity for you to, as I call it, interview every day with a company or an organization that again, in direct correspondence with your academic program. And there is also a, well, excuse me, a course uh, that is in conjunction with your internship if you were to do it specifically that way. However, you can also just complete an internship over the summer as an experiential learning opportunity. We are also right in your backyard again. So we really do hope that you guys come check us out on campus. We have an open house coming up on October 30th and we also have a virtual open house that will be taking place as well. So definitely come check us out directly on campus. Our visit opportunities are Monday through Saturday. We offer a tour at 10.30, 12.30 um, on Saturdays. And then during the week, it's at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So definitely come check us out if you have time um, and we can work with you in reference to potentially giving you um, an exclusive absence note if you don't or if you were required to submit that because you're missing coursework. So definitely come check us out. Or if you just have other questions, um, there is a student here with us. So you can please utilize the chat feature and I'm happy to answer any of your unique questions. Uh, you can also just email us or give us a call. Our hours are 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So if you give us a call, that's when we'll be available to answer Monday through Friday, except on federal holidays, we are closed. And then email, you can contact us anytime. We'll connect you with uh, a school counselor or excuse me, an admissions counselor to assist you with any questions that you have about VCU, our campus life, student involvement, housing, anything you can think of about the college search process, and that will help you make your final decision on if you would like to apply to VCU. We are happy to help with that. So for the student that's here with me, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer that. So you can go ahead and put in the chat feature for me. But if you don't have any other questions, that's totally fine too. Um, you can always reach me later. I'm gonna put my contact information in the chat. So you can hit me up that way, but I'll give you a few minutes to think of any questions. Um, and Ms. Bolander, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Or if there's anything that you would like for me to highlight about the college search process or just VCU in general, I'm happy to answer that as well. I would love to hear, like when you think of a student event on campus when it comes to vcu because i know they have a lot what would be your um highlighted event a highlighted event you can share information about you mean do you mean in reference to um like student-led events or yes do you mean something something fun that they do. It's an annual tradition, getting together on the campus to just show oh. showcase campus life. Of course. So there are tons of different things. We have involvement fairs, which happen always at the beginning of the semester, which gives our student organizations an opportunity to showcase who they are, what they do. Um, 
One thing that I love to highlight that is very applicable to freshmen that also indicates one of our favorite traditions on campus is welcome weeks or weeks of welcome. So those are the weeks that are the first week of courses in addition to the week prior when students are moving in. And that presents them with opportunities to connect with student departments. It also is kind of fun things that are just involved on campus like food outside, music, um, uh, different speakers that come directly on campus to address our students as well. And it really is what we would consider the first four weeks of the next four years. So you're thinking about the next four years that you're going to be on campus. And at the end of the first week after moving, we have these huge ram horns that are directly on campus that were done by a VCU art student. And it's a tradition to whisper into the ram horns. And if you whisper your wish that you want to accomplish while you're here at VCU, it will typically come true if you participate in that. So that is uh, again, what I would say is kind of the highlight of when you're coming to BCU as a new student, whether you're transferring in um, or coming as a first year student, and you're going to be able to kind of be wrapped in our arms uh, here in the BCU Rambling to, again, learn about resources that are really helpful to you as you're a student navigating college for the first time, but you also have plenty of other opportunities to fellowship with other students through fun things, um, you know, fun events, different games that we're hosting on campus at different areas. Uh, so it's a really fun welcome week and it gives the next four, first four weeks or the next four years when you're thinking about being here with us. It's a great opportunity for students to get connected. I love that RAM tradition where you whisper in the ear. That's great, that's great. Well, thank you so much for your time today and showcasing the wonderful programs that we have. Actually, looks like our student has a question for you. Um, he was just wondering what kind of focus or courses are on applied sciences and environmental engineering. So when you say courses, you mean the VC specific courses, or do you mean things that would maybe make you a more competitive applicant to engineering on campus? If you can just clarify for me, I'll be able to answer. And I also am going to go grab the bulletin. Uh, all of the above. Okay, so in reference to what we're looking for in a competitive applicant for our College of Engineering, that's typically around at least a 3.4 GPA. Again, at the top of our, or excuse me, at the lower end of our mid ranges, we really want you to have that. They're also looking for, of course, those highlights in maths and sciences. So I know typically during your senior year, you kind of have those options of maybe dip, uh, dipping out on a math or a science, depending on what type of diploma you're earning. So they really like for you to have challenged yourself a little bit in reference to your maths and sciences. They really love to see calculus um, or a college algebra if you're maybe duly enrolled, things like that. Again, at least a 3.4. If you're going to submit some test scores, they're hoping that you have around a 1200. Now, once you're here at VCU, your courses in reference to your kind of critical required courses are very general. Typically, they're highlighting maths and depending on what your area is, a specific laboratory science. Um, but it, again, depends on what your specific area of college engineering is. And when you have your elective credit hours or when you can kind of play, kind of dig into certain areas that might be more interesting to you. Uh, so I'm going to grab our academic bulletin for engineering. Uh, and you'll be able to see the different options that we offer within the College of Engineering, like nuclear engineering or mechanical engineering or biomedical engineering. And that will help you figure out which area or concentration is best for you. And from there, after you click there, because I'm going to drop the link for you, you'll be able to see all of the courses and the descriptions of the courses, which I think Will give you um, a little more knowledge. But again, in reference to your application, we want to see high you know, marks in typically maths and sciences, at least that 3.4 cumulative weighted GPA through your junior year. Um, and again, that you did just try to challenge yourself, whether that be through AP um, or IB or some dual enrollment courses. So just as you're kind of pushing the envelope a little bit to be a high achieving student, because that's really important to us, specifically for engineering. Um, but if you're not there, you can also potentially go into pre-engineering. So if you maybe don't have that 3.4 or some of those courses, you can still be admitted to the university. Um, and then your freshman year, you'll work with your academic advisor to go through how you can pretty much just make sure that you are doing well while you're here with us. And from there, you can then go into a specific um, engineering area. Again, it's called pre-engineering if you are not admitted into a direct engineering concentration your freshman year. Does that answer your question? Are there any other questions I can answer for you too? I'm just going to grab that uh, link for you and I'll put it in the chat.
So while you're doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap up. I'll make sure that this link is put in our video that is recorded so other students can have this information too. Um, since you answered that question and you helped me out, you answered some things that I had questions about as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate hearing about VCU. It is exciting to hear about a college that is, as you said, right in our backyard. For sure. Well, thank you for having me. Um, again, please reach out if you have any other questions or concerns or if there are any special events that you all are doing that you would like VCU to participate in. Um, and for the student that's here with us, I did put the link there. That lists um, kind of all of our, again, general engineering courses. But if you navigate over to the left where it says undergraduate bulletin, you can click that drop down and then click College of Engineering again, and it'll show you all of the specific departments. And you can kind of navigate through the courses that way. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.